Hi, I'm Chris, this is Rail Focus, and today's the day. That's correct, this is the day I finally get to own Crossrail. It might have opened two weeks ago, but considering it's taken us 12 years to get here, I don't think another couple of weeks is going to make much difference. Perhaps people are a little bit uh, fatigued with all the Crossrail videos now, but I'm hoping to do something a little bit different and maybe just take a look at things from an engineering perspective and just take a look at some of the more impressive engineering feats, some of the bigger stations on the route. This is the train to Abbey Wood via Canary Wharf. Once on the Elizabeth line I was hoping to be a little bit more chatty but unfortunately nerves did get the better of me so I'm recording this voiceover from the comfort of home a couple of days after my trip down to London but hopefully I did manage to get some nice shots which show off some of the engineering that's gone into building the new stations which really are impressive. Speak to staff or text British Transport Police on 61016. No matter what your opinion about the £19 billion project, I think we can all agree that construction of the new line and the 10 new stations really is an impressive feat of engineering. The numbers surrounding Crossrail's construction are huge and I'm not just talking about that price tag. The construction of the tunnels alone required eight 1,000 tonne TBMs or tunnel boring machines working around the clock three years to complete. Five separate twin bore tunnel drives were required which saw the excavation of three million tonnes of earth. So much material was excavated in fact that a 1,500 acre nature reserve was created at Wallasey Island in Essex. In total, 7 million tonnes of material was excavated between the new tunnels and the new stations, with 98% of that material being reused. Material was used to create a new golf complex, for example, on a new site previously used as a landfill, and at another landfill site, material was used as capping, which helped create new agricultural and nature conservation sites. All of that tunnelling and excavation culminated in the construction of 21 kilometres of twin bore tunnel or 42 kilometres of tunnelling in total and the construction of eight new cavernous underground stations. Speaking of stations, I thought I'd try and visit a few of the more impressive stations, but in reality, all of the stations seem impressive, especially if you compare them to existing stations. I think with the exception of maybe Westminster Station or Jubilee Line, I don't think there are many existing stations that can compete with the scale of the new Elizabeth Line stations. One of the first obvious choices for stations to visit on my journey back from Abbey Wood to Paddington was Canary Wharf. The construction of this mammoth five-storey station, which is over 250 metres long, required 100 million litres of water to be pumped from North Dock in Canary Wharf. Once the water was pumped out, a 250 metre long box was constructed to a depth of 28 metres below the water line. The station, which was designed by Foster and Partners, features a 310 metre long timber lattice roof that partially covers a rooftop garden that is open to the public. In my opinion, the station is an attraction in itself, especially if you're a bit of an infrastructure nerd like I am, but even the garden is well worth a visit if you're nearby. The next station on my list was Liverpool Street. Whilst it may not be as grand as Canary Wharf or Paddington, it's still an impressive feat of engineering and was in fact one of the most difficult stations to construct owing to a number of physical constraints below ground. The new station, which is 238 metres long and 38 metres below ground, has direct access to northern, central, metropolitan, Circle and Hammersmith and city lines. I think the most striking feature of Liverpool Street Station is the central corridor that runs the full 238 metre length of the station provides access to both eastbound and westbound platforms with those famous totems that you might have seen in pictures and videos of the station. <laughs> Cool. 
Next stop was Tottenham Court Road, which I would say has a modest station entrance, although I did actually quite like the design, especially with those stainless steel lights suspended from the bare concrete ceiling. Although the tube strike meant I couldn't venture much further than the platforms and the entrance, the station does actually have connections to central and northern lines, meaning it provides travellers with good interchange possibilities. Platforms which are 234 metres long and 24 metres below ground share the same sort of design as all the other underground Elizabeth Line stations with that distinctive white panelling throughout. The final station that I wanted to have a look at was Paddington, which is perhaps even more impressive than Canary Wharf. The station, which has platforms 20 metres below ground, sits in an enormous 208 metre long open box, which allows natural light to enter right down to the platform level. It's perhaps one of the few stations where you can actually get a full sense of the scale of the actual structure, as there are parts of the station where you can actually see from the bottom to the top of the station, right up to that glass roof that provides protection from the elements. The walls leading up to the main concourse two street level are lined with brick. This gives the station a very distinctive feel and also gives a little bit of a nod to the mainline station's heritage. Now, towards the top of the station you can see enormous horizontal cylindrical supports which serves to brace the top of the actual box itself. On leaving the box you get to see and appreciate the glass roof in all its glory, which whilst almost completely flat is adorned with a huge man-made sky which has been designed by Spencer Finch. there we are there just some of the highlights from my trip down to the Elizabeth line which I hope shows some of the impressive engineering that's gone into constructing the line and the new underground stations I could have probably spent two days exploring the line and I would have liked to have traveled further east and west but unfortunately I had the day or the afternoon to explore and pick out the stations I wanted to feature but hopefully give you a little bit of an impression and an idea of the scale of of the stations basically so hope you found this video interesting if you have do hit that like button and consider subscribing or if you've got any comments or suggestions leave them in the comments below I'm always happy to receive comments from viewers but I'm going to leave it there for today say until next time bye bye